Lily Ledbetter is a fair pay activist and was a plaintiff in a discrimination case. She was underpaid for years compared to her male colleagues. In 2009, President Obama signed a fair pay law named after her. Lily, it is very good to have you here. When becoming parents, male earnings are relatively unaffected on the charts. Women, they go off a cliff, Lily. This chart that we're going to share, it was originally done by Vox. But motherhood, it's an essential part of millions of women's lives. They can also lose years in the workforce. They might have to forego a promotion or, or can't work certain hours. What's to be done about that parenthood? Well, <clears throat> that's what we've been working on ever since the Ledbetter Bell. Uh, the Ledbetter Bell uh, actually opened the courtroom doors back up. So if anyone had had a case similar to mine or some other uh, discriminatory case, they can file a charge within 180 days of finding out and then filing a lawsuit and go to trial if they need to. Uh, but we have, we need paycheck fairness. They had already been working on that, on that bill in Congress for about 12 years when I first heard about it. And I really, had that been the law, I wouldn't be here. I would have gotten my equal pay in those last five years that I was trying to find out and learn where I stood because I knew I was approaching retirement age. And But we need paycheck fairness. We need more controls on the books that can be enforced to protect women and their families. And today, what's happening, a lot of states are passing their own bills. New Jersey mm -hmm. pays bills, Delaware pays bills, um, Alabama has a small bill, but not near what they need to protect women. And, and then, of course, in, we're working with Mississippi trying to help them get an equal pay. They're the only state right now without an equal pay law. But the states can control what's happening a little better than the national. When we have these discussions, it's usually nationally or statewide, as you say, or even firm level. But I'm wondering... How much of it is unconscious and how much of it is maybe individual level? A hiring manager thinking, I love her. I think she's perfect, but if I hire her, she's going to ask off for all her kids' doctor's appointments and plays, and maybe she's going to have another baby, maternity leave, and she's going to need Columbus Day because school's closed. It's not legal, but is that a factor? Yes. Yes, it is. And another factor that still just floors my thinking today why we're such a progressive country we're so far behind but like if a lady takes maternity leave when she comes back to work well, oftentimes she don't get the best job she gets discounted for the time she's been out and it's not right she shouldn't be punished she should come right back in step in the day that first day back just like the day she left uh, with seniority and everything going on because it's these women, they work hard. They bring a lot of technicality to their jobs. They're more dependable. They're more enthusiastic most of the time. I'd say 90% of the time you put women up with men, I would take the women over the men any time uh, to do the job. I'm a little prejudiced. We see. That's okay. You can tell me what you really think. We see this phenomenon, though, in other countries. In Asian countries, in Nordic countries, women tend to right. lag behind. Even those that have these policies of, like, women can take off two and three years when they have a child mm -hmm. and they're guaranteed their spot back. The first bill Barack Obama signed as president, I know that you know the title, Lilly Ledbetter Fair Pay Act. It was mm -hmm. a priority, and it was a landmark. But do you think more legislation is needed or more enforcement is needed because the gap is still there. Yes. Oh, definitely. That's where we're locking because that bill, President Kennedy signed it in 1963 and President Johnson signed Title VII in 1964, which adds a lot of rights and benefits to the working people. But, on the, but we've never had anyone to enforce it. I like to use it when I'm speaking, sometimes like comparing it to my driving. I'll speed if I'm in a hurry to get from the airport back home. I've tried been on a trip. If I think I could get by without getting a ticket, which I can't afford, so I don't speed. Mm -hmm. There is something in there that controls the traffic from speeding because they know it'll cost them. And that's what who, it who should be with people is in it pay. EEOC? 
Do you want Sir? the EEOC? Because, you know, that is a hulking bureaucracy. And a lot of times what they do don't ha doesn't have a lot of teeth. Do you think that EEOC is the right place to do it? Well, I went to EEOC in the beginning, and they called me and told me I'd, if I'd get an attorney, I probably could get federal trial faster. I see. They used to be really strong. I don't know how they are today. I haven't worked with them in a while, but they were really, really strong. Mm -hmm. Final question here. You have spent years fighting wage discrimination, and very loudly, not just for yourself, but for other people as well, because I know you don't want to leave everybody behind. Women are more likely to go into low-wage fields, which we were just laying out in our story, things like education, food prep, food service, office support. As women start to outpace men in college entry and graduation, mm -hmm. do you see parity on the horizon when it comes to pay? It should, uh, <clears throat> but uh, a lot of times what I've learned that happens is happening out there in the real world. When those women apply for the jobs and they go to work for XYZ company, which is a big corporation, let's say, they put her in a job and then give her a classification oftentimes that she can only go so far up. Even though she's doing practically the same work, the, the men that's hired with her are doing and performing but they lock her into a position that she can't go any further. Therefore, the raise is stopped uh, and the benefits. And, and I caution people that when they start applying for a job to interview and make sure and research that they are getting the right compensation for that job because you can't make it up later. Once it's gone, it's gone forever. Mm. You can't say, and, I, and I, I look back, I've had some jobs that the people told me said, Oh, you, well, we'll start you out at this. I just can't start you out more than this person leaving. But in six months, we'll raise your pay by a $1,000 a month or whatever. It didn't happen. Mm -hmm. And if they had, mm -hmm. I'd, I had lost those previous months. They're gone. So you can't do that. You've got to get the job and the money up front. We do have some that laws on the books. Mm -hmm in a few places that prevents employers from asking people what their life salary was or where they're working. They can't ask them that. So that helps them a little bit, but not enough. Yes, we need to update equal pay and make sure it's got some power behind it with enforcement. That is a great tip because having to say, here's what I made before, kind of tethers you to that. And asking, what do you want to get paid in this job? Also, you can lowball yourself. And many times people do. Lily Ledbetter, thank you so much for being with us tonight on Newsy Tonight. Thank you. Thank you. And best of luck to everybody to get their equal pay. Thank you.